Let's write some code now and create some functions. This is the calling code. We have assigned the value 10 to the variable sum number. Now we'll define a function that will modify the number. So the function that modifies number will take in an argument sum number. It will print the value of the argument that is passed in. Now inside the function, it is trying to modify the variable sum number by changing it to sum number times 10. After modification inside the function, let's print what the value of this sum number will be. Let's go. So we have actually finished the body of the function now. We'll have to call the function. Incidentally, this is exactly how you write functions. You will define a function and the arguments that will be taken. Indent the body of the function. All the code in the body of the function is indented. And then at the end, you have to return. If you are not returning any value, just type in return. Or you can return the variable that that function gives as output. Till now, we have only defined the function. Now we'll have to call the function in the calling code. So before the function call, let's do one more thing. We'll print the value of the variable before it's passed into the function. So the value of the variable in the calling code before the function call, let's print that. So that is 10. Now let's call the function that modifies number and pass in some number. So when the argument is passed in, the value of the variable is 10 after modification but inside the function the value of the variable is 100. Now let's again print the value of the variable in the calling code but after this function call has happened. As you can see it is still 10. This is because modifications to numbers inside a variable do not reflect in the calling code. Similarly, even if you try to reassign the number, that change would not reflect in the calling code. So we've started off with some number as a variable to which we have assigned the value 11. As we discussed in the previous class, this means that the tag some number has been added to this object 11. Now in the body of the function, we do something very similar to what we did in the previous function. First, we print the argument that's passed in. Then we reassign the sum number variable to 3.14 and print the value after reassignment but inside the function. With this, we are done with the body of the function. Before the function call, let's print what the value of sum number is. This should turn out to be 11. And as we can see, the value that's printed is 11. Now let's call the function that reassigns the number. When you pass in the variable sum number to this function, it basically creates a duplicate or a cloned name tag on the same object 11. And when you reassign it, that clone name tag is taken and assigned to this object 3.14. So inside the function, the value when you print it will be 3.14 but outside the function when you try to print it since the original name tag sum number is still on the object 11 when you try to print it in the calling code the variable will still be 11. This was just a recap of what we learned in the last class when in python and in java variable arguments are passed in as object references. And this means that if the function reassigns a number or a numeric argument, the result in the calling code will not change. And if a function modifies the number, then also it will not reflect. But if it modifies something like a list or a dictionary, then it does reflect in the calling code. In other words, 
immutable objects like numbers and strings cannot be modified inside a function but lists and dictionaries are mutable by functions and can be modified inside a function nothing however can be reassigned let's write a simple function now that takes in the radius of a circle and returns the area of the circle the first step as usual is to define a function which will take in a radius and return an area and then we will call this function later on and pass in a variable as the radius so here we are defining the function and as you can see by the indentation we are inside the body of the function now area equals 3.14 times radius times radius area equals pi r square now we'll return the area. Returning will basically send this area back to the calling code. As you saw in the previous two examples, we didn't return anything, but here we are. So first we assign five as the value of the radius, and then we pass this value into the calculate area of circle function. The returned value from this function is being captured in the variable area. Then when we print the radius and the area, we see how the function has taken in the past in radius value 5 and returned the area value. Now let's write a similar function. This instead of returning the area for outside usage, just prints it to screen. So it doesn't return any value. Again, let's define the function def print area of circle which takes in the radius. The indentation has changed, so we are again inside the body of the function now. Now we'll print the area of the circle given the radius. We're not calculating it and returning it as a value to the calling code. Notice how there is no return statement in the function body. Now you could also have included a return statement but not returned any variable. So this function will just do its thing. It will print to screen inside the function itself but it will not return anything as the last function did. In fact, if you try to assign this particular function's return value to a variable like we did the last time and you checked the type of that variable, you would get none. Let's write a function now. It's a little more complicated. We'll basically take a list of radii, a list of numbers which are radii of circles and then return a list of areas. You know how to do this. You'll just use a for loop. Just take the code that would use the for loop and iterate over this list of radii and put it inside a function. That's all. So here's the function that calculates area of many circles all at once. It takes in a radius list. Inside the function, again, the indentation has changed to indicate that we will write a for loop. The for loop iterates through the radii in the radius list and inside the for loop we will calculate the area of the circle for each of these radii and then add it to the list where we are storing the results or the areas of all the circles. So before the for loop we forgot to do one thing we need to define an empty list where we will hold the areas that we will calculate and this is the variable that the function will return so inside the for loop we'll append the area of the current circle to the results list and once the for loop is done we return the results list notice how the indentations are done you need to be careful that the return results list 
is at the same level as the for loop and not indented to be inside the for loop. Now let's call the function. So we'll give it a radius list which has the values 1, 2, 3, 4 and we should get a list of the areas of all the circles with the radius 1, 2, 3, 4 and there we are. One last problem to solve. Take in a list of radii just like we did in this problem but instead of just one output per circle, return two outputs, the area and the circumference. How will you do that? It's pretty simple. Maintain two lists, one for the list of area of circles, one for the list of circumferences of circles and then return a dictionary with two keys, one with the list of areas and one with the list of circumferences. So let's go ahead and define the function and put all of this code in the body of the function. The function takes in a radius list. We are again indenting so that we are inside the body of the function. Now we have one list which is an empty list for the areas and another initialized list for the circumferences and let's set up a result hash, a dictionary which will store the areas and the circumferences both and this result hash is what we will return as the output of this function. The next part is pretty similar to what we did before. We'll iterate through the radii in radius list using a for loop. The indentation changes to show we are inside the for loop again. Now area result list will append the area of the circle and to the circumference result list will append the circumference of the circle. So in one step inside the for loop we have added the area and circumference of the current circle we are iterating through through our result hash. Once we are done with the for loop, we'll return the result hash and this will be a dictionary which has both the list of areas of this list of circles and the list of circumferences. So let's now initialize a radius list with a list of radii and call the function calculate area and circumference. We'll pass it the radius list and store the result in result map. Then Let's print out the result. The slash n that we are using will make sure that the radius list, the areas and the circumferences all get printed in different lines. And there is our result. We have the list of radii, the list of areas and the list of circumferences for these circles.